Hello and welcome to the last part in my hand setting mini series. So we're going to wrap up this series with looking at some actual game footage because I realized that maybe we haven't done that really enough in this in this mini series. There has been theories and mindset stuff and whatnot, but there hasn't been so much actual <laughs> in-game examples. So we're going to have a look at that. So we've been talking about some technical stuff and some mindset stuff and some learning strategies. Um, the easiest thing that we can look at in, in game situations are going to be some of the technical stuff, obviously. Uh, learning strategies and stuff <laughs> you won't really be able to see here. So I'm going to try to point out a few things. The things we've been going over in this series have been uh, making sure that you get into your setting position quickly is one of them. The hand sync method, uh, which I propose, is one of them. And even if you don't do the hand sync method, a distinct hand position before you set. And then there's only then there's also a point of only moving your hands upwards, which means that you never take your arms up and then bring them down and then set. So we're gonna try to find those cues in in both me and some pro players here, and we'll see we'll see how that goes. So let's start with having a look at this set over here. So this is a game that I play and that I found on my computer. This is me. And uh, I found one handset here that we're gonna have to uh, have a look at my technique and try to find these points. So let's first have, this is a little bit slow motion. And we can have a, a couple of looks. This is basically what it looks like. One thing some people might react on is that the set is very close to me, actually inside of my partner. Um, he wanted to have them that way. So normally you would probably set a little bit further out to a right-handed right hand player. Uh, right side right-handed player, you would probably set out a little bit further so that you don't need to move inwards. Uh, but always listen to your partner and set how they want to be set. So some cues here. First of all, making sure you quickly get into position. Uh, this defense here, the pass that I'm working on, that I'm setting off of, is quite high, so I have quite a lot of time here to make sure I get into the position. But I do make sure to get there in time, and in case I wouldn't use my hands here, uh, the ball would actually drop into my forehead, which is sort of a cue that you can have when you work on that. I think you see that it's on top of my forehead. So I make my way over there, and I'm doing the hand sync here. I think you see it. I put my hands, while I'm bringing my hands up in front of my stomach, they do touch each other so that they get to know where the other hand is. And that naturally leads to this quite distinct hand position uh, that is in place a little bit before the ball gets into my hands. So I actually sort of have a split second to to be able to look at the ball through my hands before the hand, before the ball before the ball comes into my hands. And lastly, um, my hands are never going downwards. So from from this now I start moving. My hands are moving upwards, 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 stop, and then upwards more. So they are simply never going down uh, before I release the ball. All right, so here's another example of um, this set is by Losiak, the uh, Polish guy. So let's have a, a few quick looks at first and then see if we can point out the same things. Actually, this is a better example at rushing into place than what my set was uh, because it's a pretty common beginner mistake that let's see if I can point it out with my mouse that the serve receiver would actually sort of put the ball to their partner rather than than into the front of the court and <laughs> together with that mistake the partner usually like waits here for the ball because they expect the ball to come to them but this is not the this is not necessarily the ultimate way to play beach volleyball uh, rather you would 
pass the ball in, into the front so that you can set from an easier position. So here you can really see that, that Losiak is sprinting. He's making sure that he's going very quickly to his position. Um, because I don't know if this is true or not, but I think a lot of people realize that it's going to take energy to be the serve receiver and hitter because you're going to have to jump and hit hard and whatnot. But maybe people don't realize in the beginning that it's an, like an equal hard job to be the setter because you absolutely have to make sure that you get into your setting position very quickly. And not all passes are perfect. You can sometimes be running backwards or into weird places, but it's your job to get there really quickly. So really developing the sprinter's mindset uh, as a setter is, is important and making sure that you do get under the ball. Uh, next, he is not doing the hand sync. Uh, if you watch his hands, he's doing a quite similar movement than me, uh, also never going downwards. So his, his hands go to his stomach and then upwards touch the ball and upwards more and not going downwards before the ball is released. I would say that my hand sync method basically doesn't take any more time because the hands are moving over there anyway, close to the stomach. And whether you let them touch each other or not is not really going to make a difference in sort of in terms of how much time it does take, except if the service is very, very quick when I don't do the hand sync method either. But it's important to remember that hand sync is really just a tool to learn the distinct hand positioning easier. And uh, you can see that on pros that they do have this there is going to be a point, let's see if I can pause it, there, there. It's just a split second before he catches the ball, his hands are in position. And I bet you that position is gonna be the same every single time he does this, does the hand set. Then again, I do believe that there's a little bit of a um, difference between how pro players play and maybe how beginners should learn. So this uh, Losiak here doesn't have a lot of time with his hands in position. His hands are there like just a split second before the ball lands. But I think it's really good to learn with a little bit more time so that you really overtrain that part of it because he's, he's made sure that his hands are in this position many, many times. But if you have never done that, you might have to do, overdo it a little bit in the beginning. Because it's quite a common beginner's mistake to be very lazy with your hands and really only put your hands up just in time for the ball. And that doesn't give you any sort of... It just doesn't really give you time to, to be able to be accurate with your set and, and feel this calmness that, that you should maybe... All right, let's also have a look at Dahlhauser. He's got a few best setter awards under his belt, I believe, uh, and see how, see how he does it. So let's first have a look again at what it looks like. Oh shit, no, my computer is skipping. Here we go. So first of all, he's also working very actively with his feet to get under the ball. Uh, he's actually uh, misjudging a little bit so he's taking a few too many steps forward and then he actually has to take a backward step in the in the end so whatever you have to do to get under the ball uh, he's not if you look he would actually not get the ball in his forehead if he didn't catch it would rather be somewhere in his chest so I guess that that rule isn't maybe a, a hard and fast rule and I'm actually going to find some more sets by Dahls where he's really going to break that rule. Uh, but I would still say that it's a good starting position for beginners to, to try to learn it with, uh, uh, with getting it in the forehead or around the forehead area in the beginning. Uh, he has a pretty distinct hand, almost like a snap, like uh, you see there the hands go into the place there and um, I'm pretty sure that that's quite automated in his body as well <laughs> he doesn't need to think so much to get those hands 
uh, lined up with each other and, and equal, even though he also doesn't use the hand sync method. Here I found a, an example of this um, kind of funny sets that, that I, sound, that I see, see dollhouse do, uh, where he's basically falling. He's not really making, he's not really being able to get his feet under the ball but he still makes sure that his upper body is under the ball and then he simply just falls after the set instead. So I just wanted to show this because uh, it's not necessarily something you should learn in the beginning and or the way you should practice hand setting, uh, but it's, it's possible to set this way too. And uh, it might be something that you'll find yourself doing more and more after you have developed um, a consistent hand set with, with easier balls. Here's another example of a falling handset by Dahlhauser. So the serve received, the pass goes a little bit more to the left than what he anticipates. And he doesn't have time to make his feet go under the ball. So he decides to, to, to fall backwards instead. And <laughs> someone might have seen that both of these examples I've shown of these falling handsets have been uh, actually failed attacks afterwards. Uh, so someone's probably going to say that, hey, this is not a good strategy. Um, I think it's just about my laziness of uh, finding an example where it does work. Uh, so I don't know. I think these sorts of sets can be sort of an indicator that maybe Dahlhauser has at one point had the mindset uh, that I talked in about in video. Let's see, what was that? Four or five, I think, where he realized that doing more handsets does give him more points. So he started pushing his limits of what what is possible to do with the handset. So he started handsetting balls that maybe most people wouldn't handset. So yeah, once again, I this is not necessarily something you should practice in the beginning, uh, but I just wanted to show that it's possible and um, you can get hand setting benefits into many more balls than you might at first think. Oh, here's actually a slow motion. Uh, let's look at it. There he falls. <laughs> he just doesn't make it into, into place in time. I'll actually use this slow motion to point out something that I also talked about in this video series. So your hands should start moving outwards just a little bit before the ball lands in your hands and then it's the flexibility in the fingers and the wrists that make this soft touch and soft touch that then is a little little bit prolonged so the handset is not a hit technically it is sort of a lift of the ball and it is this lift this momentarily like control finger control of the ball that i believe gives you a lot of accuracy in your setting, uh, accuracy in, in tempo, in the height, and also in where on the court the ball is going. All right, so that's it for this video. I didn't necessarily give you anything new here in this video, rather just a revisit of some of the things that we've been going over throughout this, this mini series of hand setting. So in case you would actually be someone who has gone through all of the parts of this mini series, that actually ended up being quite long. I think we're probably maybe even over two hours of content in this mini series alone. You might at this point see that still, even though we've been going, we've been looking at a lot of parts of the handset, we're not even close to having discussed all of the details. So <laughs> the idea with this YouTube channel is sort of to go in depth with things because I believe a lot of YouTube channels are simply just too shallow. They don't discuss things in depth enough. And maybe this will prove my point that I just spent two hours on doing this, but still we haven't, <laughs> we haven't even touched <laughs> nearly every aspect of the handset. Uh, so I will be doing the more in-depth course about hand sitting as well, um, which you probably know by now. Uh, and the link will be in the description below if you're more interested in that. Anyway, I hope this mini series has helped you, has given you a lot of new insights, maybe given you some ideas of, of how to practice the handset. Maybe you already have done that. Um, who knows? 
So a few things you can do is you can click the like button on this video, you can subscribe to the channel, you can join my Facebook group. In the Facebook group we're gonna have more in-depth discussions and you can ask me questions and so on. And of course you should uh, tell about this mini series to a friend of yours. Uh, because it's uh, well you can practice hand setting together and you'll have an easier time spiking if your friends become good setters and, and so on and so on and so on but i hope you have enjoyed this hand setting mini series and uh, see you later